You know, there's always a source of uh, a term when it comes to high production. We understand, like, high scoring, high volume perimeter shooting has been emphasized in the NBA for years. Jalen Green was supposed to be one of those highly infused, playmaking, slashing, athletic two guards that can't really space over the floor but can create his own shot. And I feel like he's possibly the weakest spot out of the Houston Rockets' development to be a competitive team. Because right now the Rockets are doing very well this season. Jalen Green is the fourth highest paid player on the team. Averaging amongst his $12 million deal. So far in the 2024 season, I feel like his stats don't really tell much of the story. And I hate saying that because I like Jalen Green. I feel like he has a personality. He's an athlete. Plays uh, very well for a guy. But he's playing like... He's playing like minimum production this season. When it comes to his play over his 18 starts. 30, uh, 32 minutes played. His He's shooting a career low 30% from the field. Only thing that's getting him down the line is attacking around the basket... Moving the ball over a transition. If it wasn't for Alfred Sangoon and Dylan Brooks, we wouldn't be talking much about Jalen Green, except his un- uh, his terrible shooting splits. Let me tell you, man, when I see Jalen Green, I think it was Rockets versus Milwaukee Bucks, when it was so emphasized that Jalen Green could be a non-factor. His uh, second stint over in the second half over in the season, where we forget he's a hooper, we keep forgetting how much... Like when the when it comes to postseason basketball, he will be an absolute non-factor, and I hate to say that because I like to see younger, uh, self, uh, you know, self-inflicted, uh, uh, you know, shot-creating players be more emphasized to build up over in the league. And we're seeing younger standouts show up. Lamelo Ball has been an All NBA guard for this season. And you've seen that over his aggressive production, his amazing passing, floor spacing. He can spot up and shoot a bit better than Tyrese Halliburton. He's making and he's making less than Tyrese Halliburton. And the development over in Brandon Miller, the Hornets are really uh, shocked over when your top guy is healthy. You guys are in the conversation for a playing spot, knowing how weak the the conference is to contend over for a med- uh, for a mediocre playing quali- playoff qualifier. So. Seeing how the Rockets are really depleting this, and one of your primary uh, primary scores are just not efficient enough to push over on the roster, and I feel like this is emphasized how much a three ball has really been glorified, and his field goal percentage are pushing over the decline. Y'all seeing his usage, his usage range is, is really poor. He only utilizes uh, the upside is just when he's stealing the ball over on the fast break. That's about it. If it wasn't for Van Vliet playing like an actual experienced guard, Alfred Sengun's amazing production, and uh, Amon, uh, Amon Thompson's up, uh, upside, I, I also got to give some love over to Tori Eason. There, there's just uh, some guys that could you could go without saying that the Rockets got to push over depth to. And this is a good season for the Houston Rockets, but the one chink in the armor has to be uh, Jalen Green's uh, pr- uh, production, what he thinks he could do over what he's actually good at. And the only upside he is right now is young. And the upside is that he has time to develop over the skill only with so much of the season left. And it's only until like after the All-Star break that we kind of define what you are as an NBA team and what's really going to hold you over. Because you can say the same thing for D'Angelo Russell. But we know what to get from D'Angelo Russell. And he possibly more comfortable in the development with a team as a six-man. Most of the time. So uh, hopefully the Rockets push uh, Jalen Green pushes over the slump so the Rockets can be back over to the playoff contending team that they should be with he made Udoka completely like changing over this team that was just so lambasted and getting a first overall pick and trying to push him over in the starting rotation and I still heavily disagree that that's how you should uh, front tail a team in the middle of a rebuild 
and still some make somewhat making it competitive because newsflash, folks, fans don't want to deliberately see, uh, see your team lose games on purpose for a double-edged sword. That is silly. So I do emphasize a bit of uh, expansion draft for at least two NBA teams for uh, for one conference each. I I completely accept over the notion because there's certain NBA play, certain NBA players or at least some overseas athletes that deserve an opportunity to play over in one of the bigger leagues in the world, especially with the exceptional contracts being made to give more leverage over to the league and expand more of the parity in the NBA and possibly give some love to certain NBA teams that need the attention to expand the brand. But that's just my opinion. Uh, but, uh, yeah, Jalen Green, he possibly needs to pick spots more, you know, deliberately. Know when he's picking over a shot. Listen to the, the veterans. You have Jeff Green. You have Fred Van Vliet. You have Steven Adams, I think, is also a Houston Rocket at this point of time. So you got to listen to the guys that will have your back. You listen to your coach. Like, there's some guys that shouldn't even be playing basketball. They they will, especially Reed Shepard. Jabari Smith that needs to develop more of his uh his shot in his defense. Jay Sean Tate. And and you gotta make sure that they're deliberately connecting with one another to, you know, develop more of a synergy and especially when you're pulling over shots, because there's NBA teams that will outscore you that are not even the top ten. They're possibly bottom fifteen in the league. And they could, and they're still able to contribute a 115, uh, 20 points like the Utah Jazz that can get the certain upset once in a while whenever another team is getting massively inefficient, and that will happen, and it has happened. That's it for me here on the DST Show. Like, comment, subscribe if you want more. You think Jalen Green is going to have a down year, an up and down year? Or you think he's going to develop? Like later on, I'll get another video out, possibly about the decline of Tyrese Halliburton. Everybody's talking about it. I feel like it is a certain drop off in production than what he did to make the Pacers to the fast to, uh, to the fast paced transition high scoring team that they were from last year, and I feel like it just took a massive drop uh, in the way that he should be. And it is fair, neutral criticisms if we're talking about the health, but uh, there's like a certain standard that you got to build over the consistency in Halliburton, ain't it? But that'll be a topic for another day. Have a great night. And I hope you guys have a great Thanksgiving.